Brad, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Should tell our viewers that we're at the uh, Bally Haley Country Club on a breezy uh, morning in St. John's. Uh, people might think it's odd to be talking about curling at a golf course, but tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I, I, I think a lot of very good curlers are also very good golfers. You were a competitive golfer when you were younger. Yeah, I used to be a good golfer. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but there are actually a lot of top curlers that are, are very good golfers. I, I think there's a uh, correlation between the feel and the, the hand-eye coordination and, and um, you know kind of the, the loneliness of both of the sports as well it's uh, they, they have a lot in common. And when, you, when you say loneliness what do you mean? Well in, in golf you're out there by yourself um, you know and, and in curling you're, you're somewhat out there by yourself too especially from a skip standpoint you're, you're down at the other end for most of the game while your team is is down at the other end and, and uh, you know it can be a little bit lonely at times and, and you have a lot of time to to have many different thoughts go through your head. So it can be a, um, a little bit lonely. That's probably the best, the only word I can uh, use to describe it. But it's, uh, you know, those are the type of games I like. I like the, the mental aspect of both games and, and having to overcome those thoughts and, and try and make the shots that need to be made. Part of the, uh, the game that I like curling, it, it, the, the mental aspect is uh, with every shot, the uh, board changes, if you will, like chess. Yeah with every move, the relationship to all the other pieces move, or like billiards, the ball moves, it, it, this relationship to all the other balls, Shane. Uh, do you, when you're playing the game, are you seeing the, the game in that way, like really dynamic? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I grew up playing chess. I love playing chess, and, and uh, curling is essentially chess on ice. The only difference is, uh, you know, even more so than chess, there's an infinite number of moves and, and, and shots that you could face. And you know, I've been playing this game now for uh, really since I was 13 years old at a, at a competitive level. And, and there's probably been no two situations that have been exactly the same. You can, you can get in a situation where you have all the rocks in, in the same place, but the ice is doing different things or your rocks are doing different things. So uh, it changed the whole, um, you know, the whole way you go about the, uh, the strategy of the game. Another way I think the, the two games are in sync is that uh, in golf, uh, you kind of, it's self-policing. Uh, and in curling, there's no referee or umpire, at least on the club level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, both, both are games of honor. Uh, in golf, if you, if you have a penalty, you call it on yourself. And in curling, uh, it's the same way. Um, we played an event last week where a guy had a hit for three and and his sweeper touched the rock on the way down and, and he stopped it. And, and uh, I don't think he affect the, the track of the rock. He was probably still gonna make it for three, but um, you know, in that situation, we ended up stealing one. And, and uh, if he didn't say he touched it, we would have never known. And, and that's, I think, a great thing about the game. It's a great thing about the players. They're, they're very honest and, and they respect the, uh, the traditions and the honor of the game. Now, as, as more money has is, is become in, involved in the in the game has that changed the uh, uh, the adherence to honor and, and civility? Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I think at the top level, it's uh, the, they still respect the game, and, and the game is always going to be there. Players are going to come and go. Money is going to come and go, but curling is going to be around for a long time. And, and uh, you know, I, I think the top players, probably even more so than the mid rank players, respect the game and, and really follow the rules. And, and uh, you know, you see people. We, you know, we don't break the rules very often, but when, when you do, uh, you call it on yourself. And, and um, I think if you didn't do that, the other guys would let you know. And, and uh, it's kind of a, a tight-knit group, and, and you have to make sure that you, you follow it. And, and um, you know, it does honor to the game as well. Uh, another part of the, the curling that I like is uh, that in the club where I curl, uh, the winners always buy the losers a drink after. <laughs> and I'm not a very good curler. It's, yeah. Is that, uh, is that customary right across the country? Is that common in all clubs? Uh, not really, actually. Uh, we find in Western Canada it's not really a tradition. It, it's more of a, an Ontario East kind of tradition, and, and at the top level it doesn't always happen because sometimes when you lose a big game, you, the last thing you want to do is sit down with the guys to just kick your butt. So, um, you know, it doesn't always happen, but for the most part, it, it, it does, and, and you try and, uh, you know, if you have the time in your schedule to sit down and, and uh, have a drink, whether it's a water or a beer or a glass of wine or whatever, you, you try and do that. And, and uh, you know, it's getting, 
I guess more rare at the top level because uh, you know the the athletes are training like Olympic athletes, and you're not going to sit down and have a beer when you got another game in a couple hours. So uh, most teams just go back and try and get as much rest. Uh, I talk to you about the game at the highest level. It's it's like now you have Team Gushu, and uh, well, let me come at this way. Like, what's what's Team Gushu's budget now for this upcoming season? Uh, we, we're going to spend probably about $90,000 this year, which is, uh, it's a pretty average year for us. Uh, maybe even a little bit lighter, right? Last year we were over a hundred thousand dollars in what we spent and, um, it costs a lot of money to do what we do. And, and, uh, you know, it's becoming a, a bigger challenge now to find sponsors because, you know, the economy is, has changed. Um, you know, sports marketing has changed and, and, uh, it's, it's a real challenge to, to do what we do, especially being located where we are. Um, you know, we talked to teams last week and they're playing the same schedule or um, even more events and they're doing it for a quarter of what we're doing it for. And, and uh, you know, a little bit of jealousy comes in when you, you hear about their budgets compared to ours. But, you know, that's, that's part of it. That's where we live and, and uh, we love Newfoundland and, and don't want to compete for, for any other province. Your your ninety thousand dollar budget or your hundred thousand dollar budget, do you have to get prize money to cover some of that, or are you able to get sufficient sponsorship that you don't have to be in the money? Um, you know, it varies uh, from year to year. Last year we had uh, we had great sponsorship, and uh, most of that was covered. And we also get some funding through the through the government and through our curling association. Um, this year is a little bit different. Actually, we're struggling for sponsorship and. A couple of our bigger sponsors went through some uh, company changes and, and um, anyway they didn't renew so uh, this year it's it's going to come down to maybe winning some money early to pay for the the later events and and uh, if we don't have a good year we may have to drop a couple of events later in the year which is it's a it's a tough situation to be in with it being the last year to qualify for the Olympic uh, trials so uh, you want to play as much as you can to get as many points as you can when you started off, I presume there wasn't as much money in the game as there is now? Uh, no, not really, actually. Um, it's kind of been the same money, really, ever since I started. Um, you know, now there's just fewer teams winning it, and, uh, which means they're winning more. <laughs> so, uh, and, and fortunately for us, over the last number of years, we've been in that smaller group that have been winning the money. So it's, it's turned out well for us. But... Um, you know, we'd like to see the, the game grow a, a little bit more, but I think, you know, since 2008 with the economy and the way it is, uh, again, there's not as much money going into the sports, especially, you know, maybe second tier sports like, a, like curling, you know, there's, there's still a lot of money in the hockeys and baseballs and basketball, but once you get into curling and speed skating and some of the other uh, secondary sports in Canada, um, you know, you don't get it as much. I have the impression there's a lot more curling on television now. I would have thought that would be drawing more, more money. Uh, that, that's true. There, there's definitely more curling on TV, and and uh, you know it's not necessarily drawn it to the players. <laughs> I guess uh, there, there's a lot of curling on TV, and and we're known across Canada even more so than hockey players because people see our faces. We're not hit, hidden behind helmets or or masks, and. Uh, uh, but as far as what we make, it, it doesn't compare to a, an NHL player or NBA player. It's, uh, you know, we play for the love of the game. And, and any curler that uh, plays for a living um, is probably a little bit silly. <laughs> Why did you decide uh, to pursue curling as opposed to golf, where there is a lot of dough? Um, I mean, I, maybe people don't know how good of a golfer you were. Yeah, Tell us a bit about I, it. I, I, I was pretty good. I, I wasn't good enough to make a living at it. I, I, at least that's how I felt. Um, I felt I had a long way to go in, in golf. And, and I knew in curling that uh, I could be one of the best in the world. And, um, you know, it was just a matter of, of putting in the effort. And, and I've done that over the years. And, uh, you know, I know if, if at some point we've probably been the best in the world, but... Um, you know, we're, we're awfully close. Where does wanting to be the best in the world come from for you? Uh, I've always been very competitive ever since I was a kid. I, I was the kid in gym class that would be, you know, coaching or, or uh, pushing along, you know, your classmates when you're on a team. And, and um, you know, I was the one going through that always stayed later, showed up earlier, 
you know, worked harder. It's just, uh, it's something that I love to do. I love to compete. I, I love to love to be the best. I love to win. And, and uh, you know, I've mellowed out quite a bit in the last five or six years, but um, I still have a, a pretty big fire to, to be the best. Where does that come from? That's what I'm, I'm curious about. Um, I'm not sure. Um, you know, my father's somewhat competitive. My mo mother, I don't think, is uh, is really competitive or not to the level that I am. And, uh, you know, um, I, I have no idea where it comes from. I, I really don't. It's just something that... Uh, that I've always been like it, and and, and I imagine it a part of that comes from each one of my parents, and, and maybe the combination is has uh, has morphed into me, I guess. But uh, you know, it's um, I, it's hard to tell where where it came from. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have, I have a sister, and and uh, she's pretty competitive too, not not to the level I am, but um, you know, we we have some sibling rib rivalry when we were growing up, and. You know, so she what was, did she uh, beat you at? She was actually the she had more curling su success than I did early on. She she made the Canada Games team in, in 1995 and and I didn't make it. Um, and uh, anyway, she rubbed that in a little bit for a few years. And uh, anyway, that that really motivated me, I guess, after that to to make sure it didn't happen again. <laughs> when you say you've uh, mellowed out in the last few years, it's is. Is there a point where you can be overly competitive, too competitive to the point where it works against you? Oh, I, I think so, yeah. I, I think I was bordering on that for, for many years. Uh, you know, I, all I thought about was curling when you know, I was in my early 20s and no matter what decision I made in my life, it somehow related back to curling. And, and uh, you know, would I, would I go out for dinner to, to have fish and chips? And, and I would think no, because fish and chips are not gonna help me win an Olympic gold medal or, or win the Briar and and um, you know I started relaying every relating every decision to the to my my curling goals and uh, you know I think that helped me with my success but as far as being well-rounded it probably wasn't the best thing for me to do and uh, in the last five or six years for sure uh, especially since my daughter my fr uh, oldest daughter was born it, it's it's really given me a whole lot more perspective and and uh, you know, I think I'm at a good place now with, with curling in my life and, and, and sports in general. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's still high on the priority list, but, you know, it's not the be all and end all that it was eight, ten years ago. Yeah, I was told when, uh, when we had our first child that it changes your life. Has that been your experience? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, uh, I used to take losing so hard and, and um, you know, I still take it hard now, but as soon as I come home and I see them, you, you forget about it, you know, and, and uh, you realize that it is only a game. It's, it's, it's not something that, that defines you, even though some people try and define you by your success in sports. It's, it's really, uh, you know, I, I view myself right now as a father and, and uh, you know, a husband and, uh, you know, a businessman and, and, and also a curler, um, but I'm not just a curler, you know, I'm not just the guy that won the Olympic gold medal. That's that's kind of how, um, I guess, my perspective has changed. I, I viewed myself just as a curler ten years ago, eight, eight ten years ago, and, and now, you know, there's a whole lot more, um, I guess, dimensions to me, or, or or at least the way I look at myself, anyway. You know, to compete at the highest level, <clears throat> uh, I presume you're, you're athletic. You work at it physically. Uh, can can you be an Ed Wiernick and make it anymore? Like I I used to love that guy. Yeah. You think you'd have a cigarette on the ice? <laughs> you know? At one point, didn't the didn't the Canadian Curlers Association tell him he had to lose weight if he wanted to represent the country? Or, yeah, I remember I a story like that. Yeah, they're, they're, that's I, I think that's pretty accurate. Back uh, I think it was the '88 Olympics when uh, curling was a trial sport. They they wanted their curlers to look like athletes, and and uh, they asked him to go on a diet and, and change a few things and. And anyway, he did it, and, and his game suffered. So he, he went back, and, you know, he's a legend in the game. And, and there are guys out there that can still compete without putting in the, uh, the physical effort in, in um, you know, in, in the gym or, or even, even practicing. And, um, you know, it's a type of game where it is a field game. There is a lot of athleticism to it. But at the end of the day, you still have to be able to put the rock where it needs to go. And, and uh, whether you're 250 pounds or 150 pounds, you could still get that rock in that that place, and um, that's kind of where my perception or my uh, 
you know, my belief has changed over the last number of years where, you know, I wanted the most fit team. I wanted, you know, guys that were in great shape, you know, that could sweep forever. But at the end of the day, it is a feel game and, and there's a fine balance between that, um, that fitness and, and that feel. And if getting so fit is going to take away from that feel, it's not going to benefit you. And uh, I think we've, we've come to, or at least me personally, has come to a good balance over the last few years in, in, in getting that. Can people talk about when curlers peak in the, in the way you talk about when a basketball player peaks or when a distance runner peaks? Do yeah. curlers peak at some point? Generally, yeah. Well, I guess there's no real science to it. But if if you just look at uh, at history and and you look at the current situation right now, um, you know it's really fair for me to say that Glenn Howard and Kevin Martin are the top two teams uh, in the world. And if you look at them as individual skips, um, you know, or Kevin I think is about 45, and, and Glenn is about 47. Um, you know, Jeff Stoughton is is. 49 or 50 and, and uh, you look at that you, you have to think as a skip you're probably not going to peak until your early 40s mid 40s um, so luckily I have a long way to go to get there but um, but having said that there's there's no reason um, that that we can't be competitive and, and I'm not going to sit around and wait 10 years until we get to that age because um, the experience that I've gained over the last 15 years of playing at the top level I think has kind of advanced me a little further along than most um, you know, I've been, I've been playing uh, on tour now since I was 18 years old, and that's, that's 14 years, so hopefully I've learned something. <laughs> well, what have you learned that, that you didn't know when you started playing the tour, you know, playing at a high level? Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, patience is a big thing that you learn, um, and perspective. You know, the, all of those guys have, have lost enough and, and have missed that last rock. In a, in a crucial situation to realize that it's not the end of the world. And, and for me, for a number of years, it, it was, you know, when I lost it, the next weekend would be a, a wash because I'd still be caught up on, on, uh, on, on missing that shot. And, and uh, now I, you know, not that I miss them all the time, but, you know, when you miss them, you, you move on, you go to the next week. And, and when you get in that situation, you, you probably have a little less pressure because you know, you know what it is, just a shot you're going to make. 85% of them or whatever you know my shooting percentage is and and you're also going to miss 15% so you got to you got to keep it in perspective and, and move on and and, uh, and just try and make sure that you, you make the right 85% I guess you know and uh, all the big games are in that 85% and the ones that are a little less meaningful are in the 15%. For people who remember the, the Olympic gold uh, a lot of credit for that gold goes to, to Russ Howard is that is that what he brought to your team that sort of sort of knowledge that you can only get after curling for 30 years about how to approach the game yeah no, the Russ brought a lot um, I think for me personally what brought Russ brought was a was a confidence for me um, it, it allowed me to forget about some aspects of the game that I worried about um, when I was kind of skipping all by myself um, you know I, I had confidence that he was going to put the broom in the right place all the time and, and uh, you know with with him reading the ice and me reading the ice I knew it was going to be pretty close uh, from a strategic standpoint the same sort of thing like he's 95 percent of the time going to be right um, with my knowledge in there the other five percent were probably still going to make uh, you know right calls so I, I just felt from that perspective we were so solid that I could just go out and focus on making shots. And, uh, you know, when you're playing under the Olympic pressure or, or the trials pre pressure in, in particular, um, when you can just focus on making shots and getting your draw weighed and, and, uh, and not have to worry about those little things, it, it meant a lot. And, um, you know, the experience side of it, um, maybe that was part of it. I, I think the experience brought me, gave me confidence is, is the, the biggest thing. And, and I know, uh, the other guys felt the same sort of thing. We just felt confident that he was going to be able to handle the job that he was given. And, uh, and it allowed us to be more confident in what we were doing. And one of these days, that'll be your role, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it feels like it now. Some young I'm, hotshot I'm, team will come I'm, and ask you. I'm playing with guys that are 10 years younger than I am. And, uh, you know, I was always the youngest guy at the Briar, always the youngest guy at the trials. And, and now all of a sudden, I'm 10 years older than the guys I'm playing with. And, uh, 
it feels kind of kind of strange and and um you know it's a learning perspective for me because i i got to learn how to handle that and and uh no longer am i going to be the one sucking the knowledge it's i'm the one kind of given the knowledge i guess so it's uh it's a different perspective for sure what's the uh, fraternity of curlers like at, at that level i mean you compete against one another but you're competing with one another and you're all kind of trying to build the game it's um you know it's it's fairly tight uh, everybody gets along fairly well because you know there are very few top teams and, and you play against each other on on such a regular basis that you know there you don't want to get uh too much animosity and uh but at the same time you're, you're trying to, to beat the guy every week and, and you want to get better than them so um, it, it's really a fine balance. After the game is done, you, you, you know, you can go out and, and have a drink or, or sit down and have a, have a chat, but um, you also don't, don't want to give away any secrets or, or, um, or give away any, uh, any tips to make the other guy that much better. So it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic when you go out uh, amongst five or six top teams and, and how they relate to each other and, and how they get on. But uh, for the most part, everybody gets along very well. When you represented the country, you, did you feel that you were carrying more weight? Uh, I never felt that actually. I, I always got excited when I when I put the you know the Canada shirt or Canada jacket on my back. Uh, it, it, it gave me excitement knowing that you know you are the best in the world because if you're representing Canada at any any international curling event, you're essentially the best in the world because the best curlers are here in Canada and and. Uh, you know, it gives you a little bit of confidence. I never took it as uh, extra weight on my shoulders. Uh, I know some people have, but, you know, I, I embraced it. I loved it and, and uh, you know, definitely want to have that opportunity again. Did you feel the weight of representing Newfoundland and Labrador? I mean, this is not a place that generates yeah. a lot of gold medal Olympians. Yeah. I, mean, I remember they closed the schools that, for the day of the, of the gold uh, medal. That's, that. that's a good question. and. and it's a different answer, and, and uh, the answer is yes. Um, you know, when we go to the Briar, no, I don't feel the pressure, but when we won the Olympic trials and got to go to the Olympics as, uh, as Team Canada, and, and uh, it, it was a lot of pressure representing Newfoundland, because I, I know there aren't many Olympians that have, have come from this province, let alone won a medal or a gold medal. And um, the night before the, the final, or the day before the final, when we heard the schools were closing, like I can, I can remember the chills. I can remember I was so nervous, and that night I, I didn't sleep much. Uh, the, like I was just a, a wreck. <laughs> and a lot of that was because I knew the whole province was going to be watching, and, and I knew how much disappointment they would have if we lost. Not disappointment in us, but disappointment in the situation, and um, you know how how much they were pulling for us, and. Uh, it, it put a lot of pressure on us, but uh, it was pretty exciting to hear the stories when we came back about, you know, how the city shut down for the, the three hours that the game was on the go and pizza shops having their best day in years and, and uh, you know, the stories of the streets being completely empty and like a ghost town. It, it, was, it, it was neat to hear those things and, and it made it more special for us, for sure. Yeah, I was here when that happened and I, I don't think it's unfair to compare that as a that Newfoundland moment with like the Paul Henderson moment in in the country I think yeah we we've we've heard that a lot actually um, that for Newfoundlanders that was our our Henderson moment and uh, you know it's special for us to to have have brought that moment to people and been a part of it um, and uh, to even be equated to that is is, is pretty neat and uh, you know I've uh, I've talked to a lot of people about it, and I never get hit, sick of, uh, of people telling me the stories of where they were when we won, and because uh, it is cool. It, it's you know I, I remember certain moments of, of my childhood, or even in, in my adult life, of, of where I was when this happened, and, and so when people come up and tell you where they were when we won, it's uh, it's very nice. Yeah, for uh, somebody who's super competitive, I mean that's that's it. You did it. Yeah, it, you know, it, it is, and, and a lot of people ask me after that, like, where do you go? You've, you've achieved your goal, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of true, but, um, you know, I still love to compete and still love to play, and I don't know what I would do if, uh, if I just retired. I, I'm, I'm too competitive just to, you know, to 
just do the regular nine to five job and, and come home and like I gotta have some outlet to, to get that competitiveness out. In the, uh, in the couple of minutes we have left, I would presume your goals are to win the Briar and get back to the Olympics, but do you have goals now that go beyond that? Personal? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, again, I've, I've kind of broadened what I do and, and in business I have certain goals. Personally, I have certain goals. You know, financially, you have certain goals. Curling, you have certain goals. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in goal setting and, and uh, you know, I have lofty goals in all aspects of my life. And, and uh, you know, as part of the competitiveness, you want to achieve certain things and, and, uh, and, and prove to yourself that you can do it. And, um, you know, for curling, you know, the briar would be the biggest thing. I, you know, I would love to win a briar. Um, you know, if, if, if someone asked me right now, would you want to win an Olympic gold, another Olympic gold medal or a briar? It'd be a very tough decision. I know most curlers would, would answer the Olympics. Um, actually, all curlers would answer the Olympics. Um, but for me, where I haven't won a briar and I've won an Olympics, it'd be nice to, you know, to get that piece. So after you win the briar, is your wife going to say, now, Brad, it's time to give this up and make some money and stay at home. <laughs> uh, my wife would actually say go out and curl. I, I might be the one saying it, it's time to, to pack it in. She's, she's extremely supportive and, and loves the fact that I curl. And, um, you know, we've talked a, a lot in the last couple of years about curling until the girls can understand, you know, how good their dad is, I guess, and, and what level he is at. And, uh, you know, that would be nice for me to share with the girls when they're, you know, 10, 12 years old and they could see their dad is, is one of the best players in the world um, and, and see some of the things that I've, I've been able to achieve. Got your daughters on the ice yet? Uh, just out there pushing them around on the rocks. <laughs> they, they like to ride on the rocks, or, or my oldest. We haven't brought our youngest out yet, but uh, she just likes to spin around on the rocks and, and uh, slide up and down the ice. That's great. Listen, thanks very much for your time. It was a real pleasure to chat with you. Good luck. Thanks.